today I'm happy to have a guest like Richard Clark here with me, a founder, a CEO, a speaker, writer, and an expert in workplace happiness. Welcome, Richard. Uh, good afternoon. Very pleased to be here. Amazing. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about yourself, who you are, and what you do? So, my name's Richard. I'm British. I moved to, I live in the Canary Islands. I moved here in 2001. And 10 years ago, I set up an IT outsourcing company called Secret Source. Mm -hmm. Left it a couple of years ago. And now I teach companies how to make their teams happier. Mm -hmm. How does that make you feel specifically? Is this something that you wanted to do and now dream come true? Do you know what? I, I didn't know I always wanted to do it. I've always been fascinated by this, by the concept of happiness. Yeah. Um, ever since I've been like 15, 16 years old, I've always been fascinated by it. I only discovered the science of happiness, that the, the actual mm -hmm. research, the academic research, but six, seven years ago. And, and once I discovered it, I knew that was that was what I wanted to do. And so now, yes, I am living the dream. I, it's I I have a purpose and I and I love it. I really yeah. do. I really enjoy it. Yeah. yeah. That's lovely. Right, so let's let's begin, let's start from the beginning, yeah. So okay. you wrote in your bio that it took you forty five countries and twenty years to realize that to be happy you need to make others happy. Yes. Okay. Would you do anything differently as you look back as a person and entrepreneur? I don't think so. No. I just to give you some background. I I went to school, went to university, when mm -hmm. all my friends um, after university went on to become bankers and stockbrokers and went to the city. Yeah, I I wanted to find a job that made me happy. So I traveled the world. I worked in bars in Turkey. I taught water skiing. I taught English. Mm -hmm. I worked farms in Australia. Mm -hmm. And even though for probably 10 years, I didn't earn any money at all. Um, mm -hmm. I learned so much just about the world and about myself. And no, I don't regret a thing. Mm -hmm. Great. Anything. Yeah, you, you know, many people would say that, you know, if even if you change a small detail, then you may not be here this exactly. in this podcast or in your life personally then. Everything exactly. You exactly. So I studied behavioral science at university and I got offered a job, um, an internship teaching while well, working with the dolphin training program in okay. Hawaii. Right? Mm -hmm. All right. And for, it's a dream job for most people, right? And uh -huh. <laughs> and people have often asked me, do you regret it? I think, no, because if, I, if I'd done that, I wouldn't have met my wife and had these kids, wouldn't be where I am now. So. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it, it, makes, it makes so much sense, exactly. So what's what's your discovery specifically of happy workplaces in your company? The first thing, what you think will make you happy at work won't is is not is not what it is. We learned this when we okay. started off uh, our company. We thought it would, was all about like free meals, pizzas, going out for drinks, parties, um, nice fancy sofas, ping pong tables. We thought that's what because that's what they show in all the in all the videos and all the promotional stuff for the big companies in yeah. Silicon Valley. And that's what we thought would make people happy. But it's not. It takes makes a tiny little bit of difference, but not nearly as much as anything else. And basically, there are five, well, it depends who you speak to. But um, according okay. to the US Surgeon General, there's, there's, there's five areas. And those are, you need to feel part of a team, like a community, you belong to somewhere. You feel you've got opportunities for growth. You're gonna, you're gonna get promoted. You're gonna learn things. You've got a purpose, your autonomy, you've got control over your work. And then finally, that you feel safe. So you look at those, if you cover those five areas, you'll, you'll generally be happier at work. It's not about the parties and the pizzas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well most people will think that. <laughs> <laughs> So, so okay, let's let's break it let's break it down a little bit. So let's say I'm an I'm an employee myself, yeah. and let's say I work in a setup in a big business, and I'm an employee. I'm earning just just above thirty k a year, and I'm not growing at all. Mm -hmm. I have a small salary. Well, nowadays it's considered small, but 
it's it's okay just to live and mm -hmm. we have pizzas and all that on friday nights but there yeah. is no growth there is no that that much of a chemistry in, within the team i struggle mm -hmm. a little bit i have some conflicts is that okay. something that would make me happy you think <laughs> well, it depends that everybody's different all right that's mm -hmm. that's another thing so what's important that you've got these five areas and, and you have to have a little bit of all of them but yeah the amount of it uh, you have depends on you depends on how old you are like mm -hmm. if you're younger you you're it's more important that you've got um opportunities for growth um you yeah. feel a sense of purpose but once you're older once you've got kids the autonomy the feel of control of your work and the, the flexibility to to be able to spend time with your kids becomes more important so mm -hmm. yeah you've just got to You've got to look at yourself and feel what's important to you and then work on that thing. So like you said, you're in this company and you don't feel there's anything to learn about. It's to speak to your boss, say, look, I, I want to learn something to give me something, give, mm. put me on a training course or, or whatever. And that will help a little bit. Yeah. I see. So is, is that something that, that, that can be suitable in all workplaces or or in a particular, let's say, type of workplace? No, yeah. Well, yeah, all workplaces. It's for everybody, basically. Okay. It's for everybody. Mm -hmm. So if you, like, if you're on a really low paid job mm -hmm. and you're just about making enough money to, to get by, right? What's, what will be most important to you is the safety, the, 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 yeah. the knowledge that you're going to get paid at the end of the week or the end of the month. Mm. and and then you're not being you're not being bullied you, you feel included right that's so that's really important but once you move further up up the career once you're earning a good salary other things become more important so purpose it's really important you feel a sense of purpose and you feel part of a mm. team yeah i see that's nice so how how would you say what's the key for this to for for this discovery to be transferred in all workplaces in a in an example okay so if you want if you want to make your team happier okay so what what, what they usually the, the, the usual steps are the, the first thing is you have to understand so mm -hmm. say you're a say you're a boss of a team you're, you're a manager of yeah. a team you've got six people and you want to make them happier mm -hmm. okay yeah. so the first thing you need to do is understand what actually makes them happy Right, so understand the science. You don't just the basics for some these five areas. Then you need to look at your team and find out what you're already doing well. Because you might mm -hmm. already be doing, uh, you might already have, be, have lots of opportunities for growth. So you don't need to work on that. Look at your team, what you're doing well, and what what you need to improving, and also what your mm -hmm. team needs. Yeah. Okay. Then once you've got that, you'll have a good idea. Say, oh, look, I'm really good. Our team feels really close. We don't need to work on community, but we do mm -hmm. need to work on purpose. And then you just, you know, building an MVP, you try something, test it. If it works, continue it. Um, if not, move on to something else. So just try little initiatives. Um, mm -hmm. You can do tiny things. Tiny things you can do in the yeah. office will make a big difference. Or you can do mm. uh, other big sort of initiatives. But... Mm. Um, yeah, that's what you do. Just try things. Mm -hmm. Intentional. Yeah. You know, I, I read a quote the other day that perfection is simplicity. And okay. it's the yeah. simple things, the simple things that you you get them done in a very simple and a very, let's say, with a very simple way that, that nobody else can do because we think about the little things and mm -hmm. the routines and we don't really think about them. It's just us getting used to to do them and in this case that as you said you started and you kept things simple and you perfected them and the little things is that the, that change everything in the end makes sense yeah i, I to totally understand so don't have you come across the theory of marginal gains so this is the, the one yeah it's the one percent rule you make lots of lots of tiny changes right lots of changes that yeah. make a one percent difference and together they make a big difference so the the big the the most famous example is the british british cycling team so they okay. got a new 
new coach in in early 2000s, Dave Brailsford. And he looked, the British cycling team had been unsuccessful for like 100 years. They'd won one gold in 100 years or something. Oh. Olympics, yeah. He came in and he first, he, he looked at the big things, right? Nutrition, training, um, yeah. bike technology <clears> and stuff like that. And then he obsessed with the tiny details to, to get his team above every and the, uh, the great the, the best example that I, the one I, I like the most is he noticed that when his team slept better they they performed better the next day so he had yeah. mattresses and pillows made for all of his team okay mm. but yeah. obviously they travel a lot so what they did they'd arrive at her hotel and they'd take their mattresses and their pillows they'd have to them delivered so they'd always sleep on the same mattress on the same pillow oh, and then oh. i know exactly it's right but then he noticed that people might have caught uh like a, a slight infection while they're in the in the hotel so what he did then was that he booked the hotel for a week before had the room disinfected for a week left their mattress and pillow in there so they didn't pick up any infections from the from the hotel and he made lots of tiny little changes like that and you can do the same in the office so one one that I like that, that we did, and this was purely by accident. We used to, when we were a team of what, 15, 20 people, we yeah. had we had um, a coffee machine in the office, just so you know, the, um, a Nespresso machine, the one with the, the capsules. Yeah. And what used to happen was people used to get up, go and put the ca capsule in, make their coffee like, super quickly, like in a minute, mm -hmm. take it back to the desk and, and have a drink. Mm -hmm. And then one of the team wanted to use fresh coffee. So he said, can you buy you buy us one of those uh, stove top mocha pots you know the sort of metal italian things you put on the stove make yeah, about yeah, yeah. big ones yeah big ones <clears> make <throat> about they make sort of espresso coffee they make about 10 10 12 cups of coffee mm -hmm. and what they what happened was this one person would go and make the coffee at 10 30 in the morning and then he'd send a message on slack and say coffee's ready and what happened was everybody in the office went up to the kitchen he poured out 12 cups of coffee and then they drink it there and then, but they'd spend five, 10 minutes chatting together. Mm. Time that they didn't spend together before they spent alone. And just that one little thing really bonded mm. our team. It brought them together. And then the same yeah. happened. The tea drinkers felt a bit um, left out. So they, we bought them a big teapot and then the tea drinkers <laughs> had their own little drink. <laughs> so, That's nice. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you don't have to do massive things to make your team happier. You can make lots of tiny little changes as well. Okay. Is is it is that what you do particularly with every business and get them information on? Exactly. Yeah. So I'll I'll go into a business. I'll teach them the basics of uh, what makes people happy, and then show mm -hmm. them how they can how they can find out what how how happy they team is and what needs improving and then i'll go show them a process that they can use to introduce new initiatives look there are thousands of things that you can do to make your team happy and yeah. i can't explain them all but i'll give them the process mm -hmm. so that they can find out or they can work out what to do themselves to do have the, mm -hmm. make their own, do their own experiments yeah okay i see mm -hmm. right so if if let's say you could give a tip to an owner to begin with about happy workplaces what would that be if it's if it has to be only one one tip okay so i i, did, I would talk about psychological safety right mm -hmm. now just for the sake of you some of your listeners may not know what psychological safety is so i'll quickly mm -hmm. explain it right yeah so psychological safety it's when you're in a group and you feel safe to ask questions to challenge other people to make suggestions all without yeah. any fear of somebody saying that's a silly question or why have you said that or criticizing you right you feel safe mm. to speak what you want okay mm. yeah that's called psychological that's psychological safety and google in about mid end of the two, 2007 2008 they did a massive study they wanted to find out what the characteristics of their highest performing teams are yeah. So they looked at age, experience, um, knowledge, and stuff like that. And they found that the most important characteristic above everything else was psychological safety. Teams that had psychological safety performed better. So okay. psychological, yeah, so psychological safety by itself is massively important for teams 
team, mm -hmm. team performance, but it's also really important for happiness because if you feel safe in your workplace, you're going to feel happy. It's the first thing you need to do. So mm -hmm. if I was to give one tip to uh, any business, it's learn about psychological safety. There's lots of good podcasts out there. There's lots, um, lots of blog posts. Um, yeah. Read, read about it, and then and then apply it in your team. Make sure your team feel psychologically safe. Mm -hmm. You know, some uh, a thing that I noticed in in myself and personally as people, when we have a new idea and we are thinking to ourselves, you know, that's that's stupid. I shouldn't shouldn't think about it. And yeah. you're making it to yourself. You're making it bad to yourself because then you yeah. think even if you don't realize it, you think i don't have any any more ideas because we have people mm -hmm. and now in myself i'm saying no that's that's stupid to myself <laughs> so i don't have any more ideas so my next <laughs> question would be like is that is that more powerful in teams or in yourself specifically well, you think? i'm not I've never heard of the concept of psychological safety with yourself. I'm sure that's got, <laughs> an, I'm sure that's got another name. Yeah, but, um, 100%. Yeah. But what, what do they say? No idea is stupid. So yeah, if, if you think it's a stupid idea, but the fact that you've actually <clears throat> gone through the process of, of thinking of the idea and then rejecting it, that in itself is really good because it means you're being really self-critical. I've... Mm -hmm. People, people often come up to me because um, I've started a business, I've run a business. They come, I've had this idea, right? And they'll <laughs> talk to me, and I'll and I'll think, seriously, you, have you have you even thought that through in your own head? <laughs> so the fact that you're doing it is is a big step. You're way above half the half the rest of the population. <laughs> yeah, I mean, most people, to be honest, they just have an idea, and they just rush to tell somebody. And you, you hear them, you're this close to say uh, exactly as you said, but you don't want to say like me, I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to, I'm always honest. I'm not going to yeah. say an idea is stupid, but I'm going to say a hundred percent that that's a lazy idea. That's a lazy yeah, yeah. because you haven't been in the process of actually yeah. analyzing yeah. it and yeah, yeah. actually asking questions. Why, how, what? And all those key questions, and then they just come up with the idea all of a sudden. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Totally agree with you there. Well, yeah. So if you say that's a lazy question, is that against your <laughs> psychological? I think, I think that's probably a bit. Yeah, that's not very safe because then they would they okay. feel a bit. <laughs> they might not feel comfortable. It depends who it is, doesn't it? If it's if it's your brother, yeah. um, or your best friend, they'll probably be all right. But if it's someone, mm. say you've got a seventeen-year-old um, intern with you, and they say it, and you say that they probably won't ever ask you again because they'll they'll feel like they're a bit stupid but um, there you go, you go oh, okay that's really good that you've thought of that idea now let's mm -hmm. think about this have you thought about that have you thought about that and then yeah, yeah help them on their journey i see you know i, th I think over the years it, it became more specific and we actually care about those little details because i don't remember any of my teachers when i was young or mentors to actually get in that process and they were saying, no, that's not gonna happen, that's stupid, that's lazy, straight yeah. away, no hesitation. And here yeah. we are, like in 2024, mm -hmm. thinking about the consequences of those. Yeah. Do think, so how how do you see the difference? I think that's really important. Um I when I'm when I'm teaching people about psychological safety, I always go back to how I used to feel at school and in your class of 30, double physics and and the teacher says something and you just don't understand it. You literally do, do not understand it. But you don't want to put your hand up and ask the question because you don't feel safe that the teacher's not going to go, weren't you listening? Or your other, your colleagues go, mm, or something, make some silly sound. So you don't feel safe. Now, it's the you think it's your responsibility to feel safe? It's not. It's the responsibility of everyone else around you to make you feel mm. safe. So... It's the teacher's responsibility to make um, to make uh, the students feel safe. Yeah, and I, mm -hmm. I think it's different now. My kids, I've got two two girls, they're fourteen and sixteen, and they come back mm -hmm. and they tell me, "Oh, I, I asked this question in class," and I think, and I think that, that their teacher must be really good because uh, in my day, if I'd have asked that question, <laughs> the teacher would have <laughs> not been so nice. But anyway. Yeah. 
I see. Right, so talking about yourself now, if you could give only one tip to your younger self in the beginning of your journey, what would you say to him? So this is this is one I heard, um, and it's everything will be all right in the end. Mm -hmm. If it if it's not all right, it's not the end. Because if you're an entrepreneur, right? Yeah. There is you have some really great times, but there's some really really difficult times as well really difficult and you're questioning everything and you think oh my god why did i do this but if you if you think well if it's going to be all right it's going to be all right um you'll be fine look we've our company had some had some bad times and do you know what we came out of them much much stronger and if yeah. it hadn't been for those bad times we would be nowhere near where we are today we mm. learned so much from that but at them at the time it was horrible, 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 horrible. I wouldn't wish it on anyone, but it was all right in the end. In fact, it was better in the end. Yeah, yeah, I see. That sounds nice. It's always like when it's the big struggle at the start and then you get what you what you deserve at the end, right? Yeah, exactly. But there'll be definite bumps in the road. There'll be yeah. definite bumps in the road. Mm. Yeah, you're not, you're not expecting. Yeah. That's nice. So to, to move on to the bonus section, you have to describe what I say in one word based on the oh. first thought that comes to your mind. My God. No pressure. If yeah, you, the massive pressure. <laughs> if you feel like you want to use more than one, feel free to do so. But let's try. It, it's fun if, if you try with one because when it's yeah. when the conflict when the conflict comes up with one word, then you explain more at the end. You know. So. Okay. Ready? Yep, yep, yep. Happier workplaces. Smiles. Mm -hmm. Employees. I want to say not numbers, and I that as in they're 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 not just mm -hmm. a resource. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hum humans. Humans. There we go. Themselves. Humans. Yeah, yeah, humans. It treats yeah. everybody, yeah, the same as, as a person, not as a number. Yeah, I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. Broken company culture. I would say safety here. Yeah. Lack of safety. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm CEO. Inspirational. Mm hmm There is no light without dark. True. <laughs> Success. I, for me, it's happiness. If I'm happy and everyone else is happy, that that's um, that's, mm -hmm. that's 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 cool. success to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Failed business. Learning opportunity. Mm -hmm. Firing people. Horrible. And hiring people. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> you know. What? Amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One. I think. Hiring people is one of the best things that you you can do as a business owner. I absolutely loved it. Hiring people is one of the most horrible things you can do. But mm. yeah, I see. You know, in the employees, we say we said not numbers, right? The, yeah. I, I've read another quote though that says many people are numbers, and we can do nothing about it. But it's just those who decide to become a name for themselves. What would you say about that and how 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 would you link that personally with a quote okay so that's probably right yeah i've been in companies i i always felt i was a little bit different mm -hmm. um i was six and when i started my first jobs because i was always looking for opportunities so i always was i was never a number and um yeah but that's me and I'm, I'm very different to most people, but it's, I think it's all about the company culture. If, if you're, if your manager, if the culture just makes you feel, lets you feel safe enough to, to be yourself and to try other things and to take risks. I think that, I think many cultures are such a way that you're just doomed to be a number because it's, you just don't want to step out of, you don't want to stick your head out and, and make any suggestions. Yeah. yeah, I see. That's nice. So, cool. any last, any last words from Richard to 
fellow entrepreneurs around the UK yeah. and across the world? So I would say, right, that my... People think that if making um, your team happy or helping your team feel happy is mm -hmm. is it's just an extra thing, right? You either think mm -hmm. let let's let's focus on the profit and the revenue, and then put on the side, we'll we'll make our team happy. Now, the research that's coming out at the moment, there's a massive study um, by Indeed and Oxford University last year mm -hmm. that looked at happiness in companies and and various other factors. And happier, happier companies actually have better share performance. They have lower mm -hmm. staff turnover. They have. Mm -hmm. uh, so, if you focus on the happiness of your team, if you really, if you really understand it and do things to proactively improve it, your company will naturally become a better company. Mm -hmm. So, people will collaborate better. They'll feel safer. They'll take more risks. They'll stay longer, and you'll be able to attract better people. Right. Mm -hmm. So. Happiness, don't make it an afterthought. Put it as part of your core core KPIs, your core your core strategy. That's what I would say. Okay, that's nice. Cool. And that was Richard Clark, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.